Well, it hasn't changed very much, sadly. Uh, it's still the case that, for instance, even when archivists have an electronic records collection, like the State Department cables from the 1970s, they still print it out and review it page by page. Uh, so there's actually been very little change. Uh, but that's not because uh, people haven't thought it was necessary to change. It's just that uh, until now, there hasn't been a lot of research in this field. And what research there has been has been opaque. Uh, so it's typically done on contract um, by government contractors. And it's hard to know uh, what kind of results they get. But it's clear that government officials uh, find the tools available to them are grossly inadequate. The, the only way it works is if historians like me can work together with data scientists. Uh, and so when we do work together, what the historians can do is come to them with our problems and our questions. And we can also share with them a lot of data and really interesting data. Um, but what we need in, in working together with them is to use techniques like natural language processing and machine learning. And with these kinds of techniques, we're hoping to learn things about the nature of official secrecy. Um, but we're also hoping to learn things just more generally about the history of world politics. That's been you know, one, of the, um, one of the best things about this whole project was to begin to you know, reach across disciplines and find that I had partners you know, in, in other disciplines who shared my concern about overclassification um, and also you know, had uh, developed over many years really powerful tools to deal with you know, otherwise impossible amounts of information. And what they'll say is that um, you know, many people who train as computer scientists end up spending their careers you know, trying to figure out or predict why someone will, will click on one button instead of another or buy one air ticket and not another air ticket. Uh, and what they like about this project is that the data itself is intrinsically fascinating. So when you're dealing with you know, the history of a superpower and its efforts to protect you know, core secrets, then the history itself is, is something that you could spend hours, you know, days, in my case, years, you know, poring over. And so computer scientists, um, it turns out, share that fascination. And so we found a lot to talk about and a lot to do. Well, I think the first question is, like, why would we want to look behind the, the black text? Uh, I mean, people are curious, and so they're always going to want to know, especially if something is secret, they're, they're even more determined to find out. Um, but you know, neither I nor anyone I'm working with thinks that uh, there isn't a place for official secrets. Um, in fact, the current system is doing a poor job of protecting the things that really are sensitive. Uh, so one of the things we're hoping to do, though, is to learn about the kinds of information that has been redacted in the past. Uh, because if we can do that systematically, then among other things, we can start to correct for the inherent bias in the public record. Uh, in effect, when it comes to things like covert operations and intelligence gathering, we only know what the government will let us know. And as scholars, we can't be satisfied with that. We have to try to learn what we can about what it is that we're not seeing. But if we can begin to do these things, we could potentially create tools that government officials could also use. For instance, to prioritize documents to determine which ones are the ones that are likely to have to be redacted or withheld. Well, you know, what we're trying to do, among other things, is actually create tools for government to use. And so long before we're ever going to be able to, even if we wanted to, predict content of redacted text, we're hoping to develop tools that would, for instance, take a million documents and prioritize them in terms of the ones that are likely to have information that has to be redacted or withheld. And so our hope is that seeing these tools available and offered free you know, in, in open source code, the government is going to see the potential for automating and in that way accelerating the process of declassification. Well, there are certain kinds of uh, research that we can do that doesn't pose any risk whatsoever. You know, if we're analyzing traffic patterns, we're trying to detect, you know, unknown events and things of that nature. Um, these are things that, uh, that really don't require, um, you know, much balancing one way or another. It's really a matter of priorities and trying to decide what kinds of research is the most promising. There are other kinds of research, you know, that could pose potential risks. So what we're doing is we're putting together a steering committee, including stakeholders and people experiencing government. And we're hoping that that committee is going to help to govern the whole project. 
Um, but more generally, we're hoping to start a public conversation uh, about the need for official secrecy and, and you know, what we, I think, can agree is the problem of overclassification and what we can begin to do about it. Uh, all kinds. I mean, if you think of it, think about what it would mean to try to write the social and cultural history of our time. So our archive would be things like Facebook and other forms of social media. And so if we're going to start to deal, you know, with literally billions of emails and text messages and tweets and photos and so on, um, then historians have to begin using tools um, in order to, to manage that otherwise completely unmanageable research challenge. And so what we're doing now is we're developing these kinds of tools with relatively smaller data sets, but ones that are still much larger than historians have ever dealt with before. And we're doing it all with public and, and open information, open source information, so that down the road, when we finally do have access to some of the private information from social networking and so on, then we'll know, you know how we can deal with it.